All right, so we're here in the gingerbreads. A couple of other boats here too. Out in the Bahama Bank on the edge of it, yellowtail snapper fishing. And what we got is a 20 pound outfit, spin tackle. On this rod, we have, if you can see here, the hook, little 1-0 hook from VMC. 25 pound leader, 20 pound test. We're using cut ballyhoo. We're anchored up on a reef. And the magic is to have chum. And what you do is you throw your bait out, and then you free line it. You gotta let it go at the same rate as the current. Once the fish picks it up, then you go ahead and start reeling as fast as you can because we got a problem here called sharks. So we have one rod rigged here with just a hook. So this next one, if you guys can see here, I'll put it in my hand. We have a small split shot with a hook to help the bait get down a little bit farther. Just take a piece of ballyhoo and hook it on. There we go, we're fighting one right now. Got to reel as fast as you can. It seems silly, but if not, the sharks just ate them. There it goes. Perfect example. Boom, off he is. Ballyhoo, split shot, little hook. 20 pound, 25 pound test fluorocarbon leader, 20 pound test line. We cast the bait out, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to feed the line with our hand to go equal with the current. Get the video and fight the fish at the same time, but here's an example of a nice big flag. It's a big one. When we first got here, if you notice our chum is going a little bit behind the boat and a little bit to the south before we had wind against tide and it made it a little harder fishing, but it looks like the tide's starting to switch. Whenever you have light wind like we do today, the current's going to overtake everything. So hopefully the tidal switch will have optimum conditions will be tide taking the bait i mean the chum going behind the boat and you're fishing straight behind the boat and a good amount of current that's usually the best for yellow tails but we managed to do okay with opposite tide and wind but now it looks like it's starting to straighten out hopefully it'll get a little better notice the chum starting to run out so we're gonna have to put some more quick you don't want the chum running out, the school getting away, but there's another nice one down there. New block of chum is in. Notice we don't throw anything overboard. Just keep that. Even the cartons, they say they're biodegradable, but it's called zero impact. That's what we want to have. Nothing in the water that didn't come from the water. Notice what we're going to do. I'm going to grab this fish. It fell off the hook right in the boat, luckily. See me, he's back there. We're going to use a towel. The reason you use a towel, is look at his fins. Those are sharp as sharp can be. You get those in your fingers, and if they break off in your finger, you're looking at a, at a bacterial infection, and it could really hurt, and it'll be painful, and break out the neosporin. But I'll give you a trick that I know. If you do get a spine that's broken off, there he goes on the floor, a spine breaks off in your skin what you do is you buy this stuff called ichthamol ichthamol you go to the pharmacist you ask for it and it's like a black tar and you put it on your finger you wrap a band-aid on it and magically overnight the spine I don't know, disintegrates and no more pain another thing we do a lot is a lot of rinsing At the end of the day you're gonna have chum and blood and guts everywhere so might as well stay on top of it and make your life easier when you get back to the dock salt water wash down imperative to have and before we go home we'll rinse everything a little bit with our fresh water As you can see him. Nothing chasing him, thank God. Nice one. There he goes. 
or they say over the rail and in the pail. Hot Bahama sun boy, you need to get out of it. Stay hydrated. Plenty of water. Here we go, yellowtail. That's how fast you got a reel. Shane, we mentioned we were using Ballyhoo. And this is our man, Mark Pumo. Bait masters. That's the only Ballyhoo to get. The freshest, the best. I'm not just saying it because he's a good friend of mine, but it's truly the best Ballyhoo's you can get. He has the best bait available nationwide and he'll ship them anywhere to you. So don't worry where you're from. Just call up bait masters and they'll ship them right to you. Coming on board. Another one. Lay him down. Oh, there's somebody that doesn't believe in the zero footprint rule. We got some, some one of these boats threw out their cartons. Right, pretty fish. You can cook them whole. Fillet them, broil them, grill them, blacken them. My favorite, which is blackened. You can fry, make ceviche out of it. Very good tasting fish, very highly sought after. Notice their big, big tail. Another good thing to know is every, after you catch, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight yellow tails, look at that leader. I don't know if you can see it. It's all frayed up there, right down by the bottom from where their tiny little teeth are. It's always good after a little while to cut it off and go up to a fresh section. They have really good eyesight and they can see that, that whiteness and that scuffness. So if the bite slows down for you, go ahead and cut some off and keep going up to the top. So now we're going to pull up the anchor. Instead of pulling the anchor by hand from the bottom, we're going to use what they call an anchor ball. Big buoy, anchor ball, and in my hand is a ring. Okay, so we have the ring. This ring is going to come apart. Watch this. So now we have just the ring and the boot, the clip. We're going to take this ring and we're going to put it around the anchor line. And once it's around the anchor line, we're going to clip this on. I'll show you when it's done. It's around the anchor line and it's being, the buoy is attached to the ring. I'm going to drive forward, go in front of the anchor line, and it's going to pop it up. We're going to keep running, and the anchor line will run through that ring till it actually snags the anchor, because the anchor is now going to be up on the top, and it's going to be floating up on the top as we're running. It'll snag that anchor, and it'll keep it up high. So when you pull the line, and you're not pulling the weight of the anchor and the chain, because the buoy is now taking all that weight in, a, in hand so all you do is you hand line the line in so you get fairly close and then you will have to pull the chain and anchor in but at least you won't have to do it the whole time okay so we're about to retrieve the anchor what you want to do is you got to make sure that you don't run the anchor over with your propellers so you turn the wheel down here into an angle a little bit okay you can see the anchor ball off the side of the boat i can see the green line of the anchor line straight below forward the boats going forward the anchor still attached you can clearly see the anchor line now and the buoy and the ring are running down the anchor line eventually it's going to get to where it's right on top and it's going to pop free and you'll see the ball go down for an instant and then come back up it hasn't happened yet all right it's starting to go down a little bit right there so we just grabbed the anchor the anchor chain is now in the ring and the anchor is hopefully going to get snagged right onto the buoy and there it is it is I don't know if you can't see it with the GoPro but we just grabbed it. the anchor chain stays in the ring with the anchor looks like it is okay so then you stop 
turn the boat all we're doing is we're pulling in slack line there's no weight on it like you're pulling the anchor chain and anchor up because the anchor and the chain are snagged onto the ball so probably can't see it with the GoPro but the anchor is right on the ring so now you're gonna have to do get the chain up you see it the ring is on the anchor we had this rig break away but we didn't even need to do that didn't even break away but that's fine because the anchor ball and the anchor ring did everything it's supposed to do clip this Anchor on the reef bottom, we use a grapnel, and then we're gonna just take it apart and rig our regular fortress anchor and keep it ready to go. We got our regular anchor back onto the chain. I'm gonna show you a little trick here. You got your shackle, keep your shackle on the boat, and you're running, you're running. Sometimes it'll vibrate and the pin will vibrate just loose enough you'll throw the anchor in and all of a sudden you pull on it and the shackle is coming off and all you got is chain and your anchor's lost on the bottom so what we do is we take a tie wrap right here put it in and wrap it around here like this so you have that if you can see it there and now we're going to pull it tight that'll prevent your pin from getting on loosening up on the shackle and then losing everything and then with the CV we got this nice little anchor holder the anchor slides into a pipe down here slides in the pipe and then it fits right into these things here close it here close it there anchor secure and the lid is closed Pop down your cleats so you don't look like an idiot, and you're done.